good. Well, after reviewing the last game, I think that uh, we made a significant amount of improvement in a lot of areas. Uh, there's a lot of things that we did well. Um, I think the most pleasing was that we, you know, started the game fast, um, executed well early in the game, uh, made some explosive plays, played well defensively early. I think the challenge is is for everybody to maintain intensity, um, so that you know we can continue to play that way for 60 minutes in the game. Um, got to play a lot of players in the game. Uh, this would be a great learning experience for them. Uh, we certainly need some of those guys to be able to go out on the field and execute uh, probably more efficiently and effectively than uh, we did, both on offense and defense with our backup players and uh, finish the game uh, uh, in a more satisfactory fashion in terms of execution. Um, you know, the real season is really starting now. Uh, I think that uh, SEC play coming up, um, We've had some gifts given to us in the first couple games, and I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and I think the players have to know the importance of um, stepping it up a notch in terms of level of preparation and uh, what we need to do to continue to improve and uh, to be able to play well against a very good team on the road. So we look forward to the SEC opener, no doubt. Um, but we also have a tremendous amount of respect for Ole Miss and their team. Uh, obviously, Matt Luke has done a really good job there. Uh, they're playing as well offensively as anybody in the country. They've got a lot of weapons. Uh, the quarterback's playing extremely well. They've got three really, really good receivers that are all very productive and capable of making explosive plays. Um, you know, they've been able to run the ball efficiently. The new running back they have has done a really good job of um, – their offensive line is good. This is a really, really good offensive team, as indicated by their statistics of, you know, being one of the top offensive teams in the country. Uh, defensively, I think they've made a lot of improvement. Uh, those guys are playing hard, and um, you know, I know they gave up some points last week, but um, you know, I, I thought against Texas Tech they really played well against a really good offensive team. So, uh, got a good kicker. Uh, these guys do a good job all the way around on special teams, so uh, this is going to be a very challenging game for us. Coach, we'll start back with Cecil. Uh, Coach, Jordan Tommy was not their quarterback when you played last year. Uh, they had a, sort of a different style quarterback. What in, in watching film since he took over, they seem to be more dynamic on offense. What what exactly uh, well, does he I, present? I, I think they, they did two things. Um, I think early in the year last year, um, they weren't running the ball very effectively. Um, and I think they got back to balance, running the ball, throwing a lot of RPOs, throwing good play action passes. And um, he's very athletic. He can run. He makes plays with his feet. Uh, so he's an extra dimension. Uh, as well as being a very, very efficient passer. And I just think that, that really what he does is makes plays for other guys on his team by distributing the ball and making good choices and decisions about what he does with it, which is indicated by the fact that he hadn't thrown a lot of interceptions and he's thrown quite a few touchdowns. So uh, I think that's the, the biggest difference. I think they changed their style of play a little bit. Um, they, they became a much more effective running team. Uh, play action passes, RPOs, so, uh, and he does a really good job of executing. Stay on the side of the middle with Michael. What do you think makes Tua effective throwing the ball across the middle? Well, you know, Tua is uh, pretty instinctive in terms of the passing game. I think he sees things, you know, really well. Um, you know, I think a good example was they ran a corner cat and the safety didn't cover the X and he wasn't even supposed to be reading that side of the field and he was protected on the play. It wasn't hot and he throws the ball to Smitty for a touchdown. So uh, he does a nice job of keeping his eyes downfield, stepping up in the pocket. Um, and you know, there's a couple third down plays where he bought some time and stepped up in the pocket and were able to convert on throws. And um, I think it's you know, he's well prepared, but he's also very instinctive and he does a good job of keeping his eyes downfield to find people over the middle. The left side with Chris Walsh. Deontay Thompson with that kind of range in the back end, does that allow you to do some different things defensively? 
Uh, not really. I mean, that's what we expect out of our safety, you know, that plays on, you know, the, the free safety part of the field for us. And, um, you know, he's, he's, Deontay does have really good range. I think it helps a lot when you play middle of the field coverage. It's got a safety, you know, that can really break on the ball. I mean, also when you play split safety coverages, uh, those guys' his range back there is critical to overlap and throws, and uh, he does a really, really good job of that. So it's kind of what we expect. He is really good at it, uh, and that is a bonus for us. Two quick ones, if I can. Uh, do you have an update on Jalen Armour Davis, and then what have you seen from the offensive line through the first two games? Yeah, Jalen Armour Davis does have a, a, a knee injury that will require surgery, and he'll be out for the year. Um, the other guy that Sean Wynn will actually start practicing again this week, it's too early to tell whether uh, we'll be able to, you know, he'll be healthy enough for us to be able to use him in the game. Uh, the offensive line, I think, uh, at times has shown um, really good execution uh, and been physical, but I think a little more consistency in that area would be something that we'd all target and try to improve on. Uh, fundamental execution, finishing blocks, being a little bit more physical on the line of scrimmage on a more consistent basis is uh, the way I would sort of categorize you know, those guys to this point. Coach, we're right here with Coach uh, Mike Wilson has a tattoo on his back in memory of his close friend and cousin that he lost uh, that passed away. A, have you seen it? And B, how, how can that galvanize a player when you have that kind of source of inspiration? Well, you know, I can't speak to these things. I think you should. this is a question you should ask for Mac. Um, I have not seen it. Uh, I'm very aware of the circumstance with his friend, um, but I, I can't speak for Mac. You know, I don't know. I, I really don't know how, you know, it affects his play, his performance, his willingness to prepare, his character uh, to go about do things in a, a, a really more positive way because of his relationship he had with the friend. I, I really can't speak to that, you know, so. I would suggest maybe ask him. What are some of the challenges of defending a group with so many different wide receivers that can all do so many things like Ole Miss? Well, I think you just said it. Um, you know, I think the RPOs make make it important that the DBs understand that there's not really just running plays. There's almost passing plays on every running play. Um, so they have to guard the receivers all the time. Um, you got to be able to play really well on the perimeter. Uh, I think the other thing these guys can do is they can run with the ball after the catch if you don't tackle well. Uh, so eventually you got to cover them. Eventually you got to play the ball. Eventually you got to affect the quarterback. I think you got to play good team defense all the way around if you're going to play well against. Um, you know, this, this quality quarterback, this quality group of receivers, and their ability to create balance by running the ball. So uh, this is very, very challenging for, you know, all of the guys in the back end for sure. After uh, assessing the film, I mean, what's your level of confidence in the kicking game right now? Uh, you know, I thought we played really well in the kicking game in the first game. Uh, I don't think um, – quite as well in the last game. Um, and um, I do think Joe did a good job when he went in. Uh, I think it was five for five on extra points, made a field goal. Uh, those two guys have been very close all along. Um, Joe's done a pretty good job of kicking off so far. Uh, I think the punter, um, we need to make some improvement uh, in terms of get off time and consistency and hitting the ball. Very capable guy. Just has to develop a little confidence in, in doing these things. And I think the other part of the special teams have been, you know, good. I think we there's not one area that we would say that we're satisfied with that we don't need to make improvement on. Uh, we've got a lot of new faces out there playing. Um, and, you know, we're trying to keep some of our guys that are really good special teams players that are playing a lot more now uh, not to play that much on special teams, especially when you play, you know, these teams that are going hurry up, fastball, 
you know, we had, I mean, I don't know how many it was in the stats, but gradable plays was 90, you know, in the last game on defense. So a lot of those guys are good special teams players, but how much can they play on special teams? So we really try to develop, you know, some other guys. Um, and, you know, depth on your team is really important to being able to do that. So uh, that's going to continue to be a work in progress for us. We've seen, a, we've seen a lot of receivers get yards after catch. You mentioned the short, quick passes over the middle. How much of, is that a big part of your offense this season with so many receivers that can move after they get the catch? Well, you know, first of all, I didn't mention the passes over the middle. You all did. But um, you know, we, we, we don't really say, OK, we're going to pass over the middle this time. All right? We kind of read what the defense is doing and then decide where you want to throw the ball. And sometimes the middle's open especially when a team plays a lot of split safety coverages. That's kind of what the team did last week. Uh, so that gave us an opportunity to hit some of those passes off a couple of more RPOs and a couple of more. One of them was third down big play uh, that Jerry caught. But, um, you know, so we have guys that are skilled players who can make plays and we'd like to spread the ball around. And I think that's what the quarterback's job is, is to be the distribution center to get the ball to the, to the right players. Uh, based on the right read, the right coverage, the right movement keys, uh, so that we can be efficient in the passing game. And so far, we've been pretty efficient, you know, in the way we've been able to throw the ball. And I think it's going to be more important that we, you know, clean up our protection and be able to continue to do that, uh, and give our skill guys opportunities to make plays as well. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.